Good evening and salutations, my Days of Our Lives fans. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to call her Mardev, um, because I'm not comfortable saying that. Which is, again, <laughs> I've said this before, but I, I, it bears repeating. I watched this show on Netflix called Sabrina. Um, the show is very, very, very dark. Like, apparently it's darker than it's actually supposed to be. The point is, they get into a lot of dark stuff. And somehow, I'm totally fine with that. But, you know, when it comes to stuff like exorcism and stuff like that, it just... It creeps me out, let me be honest. It creeps me out. But at the same time, I'm a horror fan, so it's like... You know. But for the sake of this review, I think that's what um, DC Soap Sanctuary called me. She called he called him um, Mardev or, or Dev Marv. I'm called Mardev because anyway, um, I'm curious. So she was looking for this tape um, when she woke up. She had this bad nightmare and. It kind of got me a little confused. I didn't really understand why, if she's still possessed, like, was it, was it Marlena or was it, you know, the other, the other guy? Um, when John walked into the room, you know, he wanted to make sure she was okay. And, you know, she was meant to talk about having Doug out. And that's when John was like, you know, usually tape all your sessions. And... You know, um, she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she got really hyped up and she wanted to go to the office. And then she went to the office. She found the tape. She replayed it for some odd reason. I know it's to catch people up, but I didn't really understand why you were replaying the tape. You were there. You know exactly what was said and what wasn't. What was the point of that? I mean, I guess the whole point of, you know, destroying evidence, maybe... I get that. So why didn't she just not destroy the evidence? I, I was, like, confused. I was confused a, a, a lot about that because I was like, is she still possessed? Is it one of those things where it's like Bruce Banner and a Hulk? Like, I mean, I'm literally sitting there like, what is going on? It's just a little confusing. Meanwhile, Johnny called up John and John was like yo listen we're not investing in this movie and to be honest I don't even want you making this movie because you're bringing up stuff from the past and it's just it's just not a good idea and John Johnny tries to make jokes out of it you know he's doesn't really seem like he's not just he's not taking what John says seriously it just seems like he doesn't really care. Like, he's not really too concerned about his feelings, about Marlena's feelings. It's just like, all right, cool, I want to make my movie, and I'm going to sit there and do it anyway. Okay. So he talks to Abby, and, you know, Abby was meant to saying, like, yo, um, you know, a lot of people in the town may not like the movie. Like, are you surprised about John's reaction? Like, what did she say something along the lines of, you know, what most people see as, like, exploitation, like, you know, with your family and stuff like that. And, you know, it just seems like no matter what anyone says, between John, um, Chanel, hell, I think even, um, Allie might have said something. It just seems like he is completely determined to make this movie. And not only this movie, but he's making it more about the possession than some of the other stuff. So I'm just like, dude, what are you doing? But he does, um, ask Abby, I think, to be to play, um, Marlena. And she doesn't say no. Um, I think it'd be kind of interesting if she was to sit there and play him. You know, like, play in the, in the movie. Because it'll give her something to do. And she wouldn't be sitting there, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like it, she needs to have something to do. And since she's clearly not working right now, why not? 
I guess that's one of the privileges of being the boss's daughter. She can just kind of just come into work whenever she wants. Pretty sure the other employees must be real happy about that. EJ and Lucas. Oh my goodness. They really don't like each other. Um, and they got a huge history with them, with those two. So I'm not too surprised. But, um, you know, EJ sent their calling for reservations for his date with Nicole. And Lucas comes out of nowhere and is all like, ah, you talking about Sammy? What's going on? And just like getting up in his face. They go back and forth and things get kind of heated. And, um, you know, he starts bragging to Lucas about how, you know, he's the love of her life. And then it's like, oh, by the way, I'm giving your son, you know, money to make his movie. And just, you know, really just kind of rub it in his face. And it gets so bad that Roman actually had to step in because um, it, it was about to be a fight. <laughs> it was clearly about to be a fight. And I'm not going to lie, it's so funny when he like, was like standing next to each other and like Lucas kind of had to like look up because <laughs> it was just that much more taller than Lucas. But um, Roman broke it up. And um, after a while it seemed like they were about to go into blows. EJ, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I still have not figured this guy out yet. Um, how long was EJ around for the last, like, um, like when he first got to town or whatever? How long was he there for? Because I'm really hoping that this EJ sticks around. Um, anyway, he just seems like there's at times where he just does not give a damn. He literally started, you know, calling Sammy a tramp in front of his, in front of her father. And I'm like, bro, are you serious? At this point, you know, Roman's like, yo, listen, I, I, it, it's clear that you came here looking for a fight. And granted, this whole thing started off when Roman's not there trying to give, um... EJ advice about how to handle Johnny, you know, and this is after, you know, EJ finds out that Roman, you know, gave him money to make his movie. And, you know, EJ's, you know, snitch to talk about, oh, it's just a pipe dream and, you know, he's not really serious about it, yada, yada, yada. Just really shooting him down before, you know, the movie's even being made. But I guess to be fair, to be fair to some extent, you know, EJ has said, you know, that Johnny in the past starts things but never finishes it. You know, he's passionate about one thing for a good minute and then he just goes into the next. So to be honest, I know there's probably a lot of people that's like, oh, you know, won't you give your son a chance and yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, EJ, you know, he has history with his son. He knows his son's habits. He knows that he stirs stuff and he stops and he starts this and stops that. So, to be fair, I... I guess I'm understanding where EJ Smith they're coming from. Um, so that's why he was also mad. Like, yo, not only did he give him money, but you're giving the money too? They go back and forth. And, you know, again, Roman Smith, they're trying to give him advice. Like, yo, don't push your son away. Don't do it. One thing leads to the next. And he brings up um, Sammy, you know, comparing him to um, Johnny for some odd reason. And that's when you start calling them names, and Roman's like, yo, listen. You say, pretty much, you say one more thing about my daughter, and it's it's not going to end well. Um, EJ apologizes, and Roman's like, yo, listen, I'm, you know, I'm, I'll just tell you, I'm surprised he actually held himself back. Like, literally, like, his natural reaction as a father, should have probably been like, yo, let me just clock this dude real quick. But, you know, he does know his, his daughter's history. Even with that being said, regardless. But he does kind of calm down. He's like, yo, listen, I'm just letting you know. He gets back to that whole, you know, advising EJ about don't push your son too far because you may wind up losing him. Um, let's talk about Kate and Philip for a minute. Um, Kind of an odd scene. I was kind of just like, all right, it's cool. I guess you got to be here to be here, whatever. 
But long story short, they do wind up talking about Roman. And, you know, Kate is just like, you know, getting into a relationship. There's a lot of risk. And I'm just not really trying to do it again. And here's the thing. She's gun shy because of the whole Jake thing. Um, because she developed feelings for him. There's a lot of time, a lot of effort that went into a relationship. All for Jake to pretty much be a dick. So she's just like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Because here's the thing. She comes over there and she talks about Lucas and how his, he's heartbroken and stuff like that. And Phil was like, <clears throat> um, Lucas is a grown-ass man. Let him deal with his own problems. Stop meddling. He's fine. And that's when they shift over to Kate. And, you know, Kate was not this thing. Like, you know, she admires Roman in a lot of ways. She started bringing out a lot of these good qualities that she likes about him. But ultimately, she's just gun-shy. Um, so I guess Roman has uh, Jake to thank for that. Now, um, Trip and Julie are, you know, looking over Doug and stuff like that. And they get into this kind of debate about science versus, you know, religion. Which, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, um, I just, I feel like it's a very tricky or slippery slope when it comes towards bringing up religion in pretty much any form of media because you always run the risk of in pretty much offending someone. I mean, how you run the risk of offending, some, offending someone anyway just for saying anything, but, you know, again, I was taught, you know, growing up and stuff like that, working and stuff like that or whatever, is there's three things you don't talk about. Um, religion, politics, and money. But they do have their little debate, and you know, um, you know, Trip is kind of set on science. You know, he's like everything has a reason. You know, I, what you call miracles, I call it. I don't know. We we haven't found an answer yet to it. You know, like there's there's always some sort of um, scientific reason. So you go back and forth about that. Now there's a couple there's a couple of times where um Doug's I guess um his BP kinda raises or the little heart monitor thing, whatever, it it starts to go off a little bit more. And that's when they talk about Marlena, I think. And then again, um when John was there talking to Julie and he said something and his whole, you know, heart rate kind of beat a little bit faster. Now Towards the end of the episode, you know, John's like, listen, why don't you go and take a shower to Julie, like, go take a shower, get fresh and everything like that, and come back, and, you know, you can be strong for him, you gotta be, you gotta take care of yourself first, pretty much. So she leaves, and towards the end of the episode, Doug literally says to John, yo, Marlena tried to kill me. It's just like, the hell are you talking about? But... I mean, I think after a while, a lot of this stuff is going to add up, you know, between the whole Bible incident, that, the way that Marlene is acting, honestly, to tell you the truth, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I'm almost a little surprised that he hasn't noticed that Marlene has been acting a little off. Um, so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just waiting, I'm just looking at the clock, just waiting. Chanel and Allie. Chanel is dead set on when she told Allie, like, yo, listen, I don't think you should make this movie. You start doing stuff like that, you invite the wrong kind of things. It's just not a good idea, you know? Um, and also, she was just creeped out in general after watching that movie and then talked about all the things that happened on the set of that movie. Um, the Exorcist, of course. So, she's creeped out about it. Not gonna lie, her talking about it creeped the hell out of me. Um, so, you talk about that for a little bit. And then, not gonna lie. They talk about that. They talk about, you know, Allie. Because um, Snow says something as far as, like, the bedrock and whatever. And then Allie is all like, oh, I see you didn't waste any time. 
or something like that. And Snow like smiled and laughed a little bit. And I'm like, I don't know if I would have done that if I was Snow. I would have been like, damn, what kind of woman do you think I am? Like, she automatically went towards there, you know. And Ali once again was like, yo, listen, are you cool with me? And, I, you know, um, Trip being together. And she's like, it's cool, you know, just be careful. So you talk about that for a little bit. Um, you talk about Trip. Talk about Trip and Trip and Ali. And she pretty much still says, you know, after all the stuff that, you know, Trip has been doing, as far as like, you know, being over there at 5 o'clock in the morning. Waiting for the sitter to be there. Just being, just like, being on point, you know. All the qualities that she sits there and talks about him. All the good qualities that she sits there and talks about him. Um, that she talks about, that she brings up with um, Trip. You know, she brings up the fact that, you know, she he said that he loved her. And that she's not ready. And that she doesn't know she is going to be ready. And. You know, I'm just not there looking at Ali. I'm like, Ali, you're going to lose this man. Okay? You're going to lose this great man that's compassionate, that's good looking, that's going to be a doctor, that is always there for you, is always there for your son. You're going to lose that. And honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't want to sit there and be like, I'm going to laugh because that just sounds a little bit too dickish, but... I'm just going to sit and look at it like, yo, I have, I'm going to have no sympathy when he finally has enough because you're with a great guy. And I get it. You don't want to sit there and, and try to rush the whole love thing. You When you want to sit there and say it, you want it to be perfect. And there was one point when Chanel was like, yo, so what's stopping you from saying it? And we all know what that is, but I'm just like, boo. I don't know if you're stringing along this guy you still have unresolved, you know, feelings for Chanel, but you're going to want up losing this great guy who is there for you 100% in all aspects of life because you want to be... I don't know, I just sit there and I look at it and I'm just like, alright, like, you have two choices. You have Chanel, which um, would never be my first or second or even last choice. But whatever. You have Chanel... You have Trip. I honestly feel like you're much better off going out with Trip than with Chanel because I'm pretty sure the stuff that. Here's the thing. Ali seems like she's a lot to handle and not in a good way. And it seems like it requires a lot of patience to deal with this woman. Well, I'm pretty sure Chanel doesn't have a fraction of the amount of patience. That trip does. So all around, I'm just like, all right. So when you pick the wrong option, and you will pick the wrong option, I hope Chanel treats you just as good as Trip, because if he does, if she doesn't, you're the one that's gonna look like a dumbass. I think that's about it. I mean, yeah. Towards the end, Trip does come to meet up with Allie. And, um, Chanel, there's one point where they're making out and, you know, Chanel has that look on her face like she is still jealous. These girls, <laughs> they are just so, like, they don't know what they want and it's like they're bouncing around. It's like, oh, well, I want to be with this person, but I can't, so I'll be with this person and I'll settle. But then, you know, towards the end, when I decide I want to sit and be with the other person... I'm going to hurt the other person I'm with. So it's like you two girls, in a lot of ways, they definitely deserve each other. Um, yeah. I um, I feel like that's about it. If I miss anything, please write down in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. I will see you in the next video.